A lot of times we start to discover these things and how they work, like for example, how the banking system works or how the economy really works. But no one does. And people know. go, oh my God, because they get overwhelmed. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're bringing uh, an opportunity to the general public and we're educating people one household, one business at a time and showing them that they do not have to, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to be a victim to the banks. You don't have to be, here's the truth. We think that the banks, that we need the banks. The truth is they need us. Welcome to the Just Life Podcast. It is our hope that the gritty, real, and uncensored insights we share with you here will help you get your shit together as you explore and discover what it takes to live your best life on your terms. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna dig in here, and it's been for fucking ever. <laughs> gritty, real, and uncensored, but we never did say unscripted, did we? <laughs> I never did say that. Which is ironic, considering that's usually what it was. Well, and, and it'll always be unscripted. Yeah. So we're back after a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, we're doing some planning. We've got a, a whole group of new people who are uh, creating now together inside of what's going to be a uh, a media company for community. So we've always talked about the Just Life being more than just a podcast. We just didn't really know what that looked like. Well, it's starting to get really clear. And episode 77, which is the episode today, we've got now seven people in the studio. Lucky number seven, I think. It's gang. 77. It's with seven people in the studio. And you've got a very special guest today. And I do have a very special <laughs> guest today. I actually have my sister hanging out with us. And she's supporting us on creating some social media content, snapping some pictures, probably mostly selfies, but it's all good. <laughs> It's all, it's all good. Um, and I, I want to, before we get into it, I just want to uh, go around and have everybody introduce themselves. If you're open. Which you have to be because you're in the... <laughs> you you signed a contract. Said, you said you were going <laughs> to... Shameless here. So um, why don't you start, Patrick? Okay. Um, so we're just doing introductions. Of yeah. Ourselves, right? Who you are, why you're here. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I am a... Uh, Pro parkour free runner. I've um, been doing that for ten years. I'm an amateur actor stuntman. I've uh, been doing that for about five years, which is, you know, not getting anywhere too fast, but it's a process, I suppose. Always is. Uh, and I'm an intrepid technology entrepreneur, and I manage a tech shop up in Airdrie, uh, where we deploy technology solutions for small businesses to see how we can develop and innovate and adapt to the growing trends of technology. Awesome. And who are you? Uh, Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, I te- Patrick. I technically said you so. did that, yeah. but nobody gives some context for like who you actually are. Patrick uh-huh. Michael. David oh, Patrick. should I just say my name? Just saying. I thought you were alien. Oh shit! Did I, yeah. did I give you up? Are you, are it's you Shadow Weaver. <laughs> yeah. what I'm no, I just wanted to point that it's pretty cool that you're also David's brother. That's right. I refuse to live in a shadow. Oh, okay. <laughs> David's, David's baby brother. <laughs> well, anyway, it's not about that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, I, as always, I'm oh, I'm excited to have you here. I love you. It's not your first time on the podcast. We have some great sessions. Actually, one of our episode seventy six uh, is is your podcast when you came back from India. And it's oh, a yeah. fucking brilliant episode. We just got to get it up. We just yeah. haven't had a chance to yet. Exactly. And so we got some new blood in the ring. Devin. Welcome. Yes. Uh, so my name is Devin. I am the business rebel and I help people outside of the regular world find a way to turn their passion into a business. Yeah. And you have a focus, uh, a, a passion even inside of music, right? As an industry helping musicians, that's been a... That's a where it all thing. started from. Yeah. I, I worked with a lot of musicians. I ran a label for 10 years. Uh, I lost all my artists to scams, <laughs> which is why I'm so much more passionate about this than, I, than I've ever been. It's just because there's so much noise in the system now that it needs some clarification, it needs some clarity. So that's kind of my job. Awesome. Well, welcome. And thanks for jamming with us. Thank you. Al. Yo. <laughs> Tell us you will hear me, now. you won't see me. How's that? <laughs> Fuck it, man. Fuck it. I'm yeah. with you, man. We did a chocolate section, I was just saying earlier. Right there, man. Section. I want to do the chocolate section. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, delicious. Delicious. I, that's my plug. <laughs> Y'all want some? I'm selling it, man. You want, well, not all of the gym. No, oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, off topic. We'll talk later. So tell us a little so, about yourself. Yeah, so Ella's my name. L-A- Oh, as you can 
tell by that note that I perform. I'm a singer. You sure as hell do. Yeah, absolutely. There it is. And then, so the the other thing that I do is also just like in, investing. So second mortgages, uh, people who are in financial struggle at times or just not accepted by the banks. So I take care of left brain, right brain activities in my world. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to hear more about you and what you're bringing to the table. Yeah. Thank you for dragging me here. Hey, man. I got to win somebody, right? <laughs> Every weekend. Like, no responsibility. You can count on it. Hey, you can count yeah. on it. Chris. Cool. Yes. He's behind the battle station. I, 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 am, I, am, I am manning the battle station today. That's uh, right. And it seems like every day the last little while, <laughs> which is great. Um, so my name is Christopher. I'm an acupuncturist and Chinese medicine practitioner. Uh, I'm a coach for purposeful existence. Um, I, that's, to, that's just the tip of the iceberg of, of who I am and what I'm here to do. Um, part of what I am here in, in this capacity and this role for is to... Hold the hold the space, hold the container, make sure everything is is going the way that it needs to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a we have a, a, a beautiful space, creative space to create our world in and through. Um, and you'll see more about who I am and what I'm up to um, in the coming weeks and months um, on the Just Life. Yeah, man, I'm really really grateful that you're here. <clears throat> totally. Okay, Shy, tell us a little about you. Hi, I'm Shine Schmeichel. I'm David's brother. Your right. sister? <laughs> no, 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 I'm I didn't even know that. <laughs> this is new. No, wait, sorry. I'm David's sister, and um, I'm still in high school, and I don't know, I guess I don't really do that much. So Cheyenne's uh, joining us. She'll, she's snapping our, our photos in the background as we're on the mics, and um, just trying something new out, right? Thank you for being here on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Mm, touche. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really takes something to be here on a Saturday morning. Yeah. And we, uh, we've we got a special guest who's not a new guest, <laughs> but has never actually been a guest. It's yeah. super fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying something new out, and, uh, and that is to create just a little bit more intentional structure around... Uh, some of the conversations that we really want to have and, and don't always get a chance to. So I'm going to do a little introduction. Vern is an authorized infinite banking practitioner. He practices and teaches families and business owners the process of becoming your own banker. He is driven by the possibility of freedom for all. Vern's vision is to transform the economic landscape our children inherit. For almost 10 years, Vern has been in the financial services industry. Naively, he got into the business thinking he was going to learn how to help people deal with their financials powerfully in a way that actually has an impact on their everyday lives. It didn't take too long to realize it was all about pushing products. This led to years of struggle as he found his purpose in the world and in business. Thankfully, Vern has found a home with Ascendant Financial, an organization with years of experience building systems that allow clients to recapture the cash flow and interest we normally permanently transfer away from our families and businesses in the form of taxes, interests, payments, etc. We're going to be talking about a system called the infinite banking concept. And he is the guest on his own podcast. Oh, man. (laughs) What an honor to be here. I know. (laughs) It took you long enough. Yeah, man. Yeah, and it, I, it took me long enough, and it also took something to keep my mouth shut during all those introductions. I bet, I bet. <laughs> that was great. So we're going to try something out. I, I know a lot uh, by nature of just you sharing with me and, and talking with me about what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to, for those listening, give us a sense of uh, more clearly understanding what the problem is that we're experiencing inside of the world of finance? Oh man. <clears throat> so that's a pretty loaded question, but let's, let's dial in. So one of the biggest issues I think from an industry perspective uh, in our business is that like uh, you alluded to in my introduction there, it's all about pushing product. So people are selling products left, right and center. <clears throat> Clients are buying products left, right and center. And both the person selling the product and the person buying the product, neither one of them understand or have acknowledged the problem. Like 
they think they're acknowledging the problem. Hey, I want to grow my money. I want to pay off debt. Um, I want to know how to manage family safe. I want to keep my family safe. I want to manage my cash flow better. Okay. Those things are all matter. They all make sense. But why is it that you need to pay off debt? Why are you in debt? You keep buying stuff. You keep buying stuff. I can't afford. Right. And how do they buy stuff? Because they make it sound really appealing. Credit. (laughs) Okay. So we're starting. They make it easy. We're starting. We're starting to get somewhere. So credit, that means we're using whose money? Somebody else's. Somebody else's. So then we're on the hook to pay that money back. We have to pay principal and interest. And who controls those terms? No, oh, man, it's not do, us. Do you the have banks. Any, yeah, do you have any The evil power? centralized banking system. <laughs> but, but listen, like, here's the deal. When we have these conversations with people, it's a bit disruptive because you, you have to be careful that you don't end up, uh, you know, going down the rabbit hole of conspiracy. We're talking about real life issues and how things actually work and just what's so regardless of of if the banking system works or not what's so is that we're all giving away our money every we're not even aware of it yeah you're not even aware of it you just think it's normal so here's the deal let's paint the picture the problem is is that we go to work every day we bust our tails for the luxury to earn some type of income cash flow comes in but then what happens to it 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 immediately disappears through the form of all your bill payments most people are in debt up to their eyeballs, right? And then, so your money's constantly, it flows directly to the bank. So they have your money. They have control over it. They can do with it whatsoever, whatever they choose to do with it. They actually own it. People don't realize that. When you make a deposit in a commercial bank, you unknowingly and unwillingly became a creditor of the bank. They owe you that money. Because they're lending it out to other But people. you don't own it anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll give it back to you on your demand, but on their terms. So if they tell you to come back next week, you got to come. You got to come back next week. There's nothing you can do about that. Now that that might not be a big deal. It's in the fine print in the terms and conditions. Yeah, it's nobody. Just, it's just how it works. works. But so the point that I'm trying to make here is who's in control of your money? Well, it is not you. clearly it's the bank not now. You. It's yeah. not you, right? <laughs> and so then we start, like I said, we start you know borrowing money through for cars and for mortgages and all the rest of it. We all just think it's normal. But where does the money always wind up back? In the bank. In the bank. So that's where your money goes. Yeah. So that's the point. And what we're concerned about is, oh, I need to grow my money. I need to grow my money. But let me ask you this question. Is your investment portfolio growing larger on a daily or monthly basis than your expenditures, than what's flowing away from you? Mm. I don't even have an investment portfolio. So. <laughs> right. So does that, does that make sense? Does that question make sense? So yeah, if I have a hundred grand in, in a, in a, whatever, an investment account, a savings account, is it growing more than what I'm giving away every month? No, probably not. It sits there. So if you don't control the banking function, if you don't control the flow of your money, you're, you're, you're perpetually working backwards in, in wealth creation. I, I had this conversation on a micro level with my kid the other day. We went out. Um, I, I'm kind of like dabbling, exploring, flipping on Amazon. Mm-hmm. So we had to buy things to sell those things. And the profit that was in those things, my kid wanted to like buy a toy there. And I'm like, no, because that's like what our profit's going to be. And so there's this kind of like offset. And like you go and you invest, or you make these investments or what you think is investments, but you're like spending more money than is actually coming back in on the investment. Yeah, yeah. So if you think about that for a second, the reality of it is most Canadians will spend way more money financing cars over their lifetime than they will ever save for retirement. Whoa, that's crazy. What's worse is when you drive that car off the lot, you lose 30% of it immediately. Right, okay, perfect. So let's talk about an asset like a house, Yeah. right? Everyone's like, oh, you got to buy a house. It's a great investment. Da, 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 da. Okay. Got equity. Sure. Fair enough. But here's the deal. If I spend two grand a month on my mortgage, where's my money going? To the house. It's going to the mortgage. It's going to the mortgage. It's going to the bank. You actually don't have that can money you, anymore. Can you access that money? But isn't that now added to the equity of your home if you wanted to read it? Right. Show me equity. It's, Show it to me. <laughs> what are you, you going to do with it? I mean, isn't it something you can leverage for additional funds if you need it? In and the who's moment? in control of that process? Of course, the bank is. That's right. The ones so if they money. say no, what are you going to do? Now you have three hundred. You have three hundred thousand dollars <laughs> trapped inside of some. I see your vessel. point. Okay. Yeah. And now what do you have some to do? You, you need fifty you gotta grand. You got to try and get another loan somewhere. Right. So you're struggle. just digging yourself so deeper. So we yeah. need to become the source of our own financing. We need to become the receiver of the cash flow instead of constantly being the giver. It's really quite simple. So is the solution having your own safe? 
Yeah, you're the there solution. You go, well, the solu- I, I love how he, he asked that question. Yeah, it's a great so, question. So yeah. what's the solution? Right, so we 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 kind of jumped a little quick, but that's just. You see what my point is, though. Yes, as you, we, do. we yes. go Get from out of the not understanding the problem, and it's all about how you think, because people try to wrap their mind around like, oh, well, I don't understand. Like, I got to pay my bills and stuff. Yeah, you got to pay your bills and stuff. But my point is, is when you when you pay a bill, you permanently transfer that money away from your family. You have not benefited from it at all. It's no longer growing for you. You'll never get it back. So if we could find a way to run it through a system that will allow it to grow and compound for us, but still maintain access to the capital so that we can acquire the things of life, now we've got our savings building and growing and our our liquidity, our access to capital continuously grows and we still get to get the thing. And now, if it's a thing that I would normally finance, like a, a, a car, but capitalize the system that we're talking about that we'll get a bit more into. I can now leverage my own system, my own banking system, leverage it, go buy the car, and now the six or seven or $800 a month that I was gonna pay to the car dealership and permanently transfer away from my family, I can now send that where? Back. Back to my system. Back to yourself. So now who's receiving the payments? <laughs> so I guess well, you gotta create the system. Though. That's right. What's yeah. the system look like? Yeah, so that's what we teach people how to do. So oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Hey-yo. So. hey <laughs> It's just funny because I've recently come into some money and I've just been thinking about starting a new banking account. And I'm like, you but I don't want them to have my money. To, to yeah, let's give them our money. And no. we, we won't have time to get into the into this on, on the episode, but... Uh, maybe maybe 2.0 if sharing with you guys what the banks actually do with our money and why our economy is I, so oh, I'm, I'm well aware it's, uh, but, I, but are other people aware of that is, is really the thing are they, yeah because if it, they did maybe it wouldn't be such a well integrated system right? and, and here's the thing is, is a lot of the times we start to discover these things and how they work like for example how the banking system works or how the economy really works but no one does and people anymore. go oh my god because they get overwhelmed yeah. So what we're doing is we're bringing uh, an opportunity to the general public and we're educating people one household, one business at a time and showing them that they do not have to, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to be a victim to the banks. You don't have to be, Here's the truth. We think that the banks, that we need the banks. The truth is they need us. Yeah, we're the resource. Literally with They've done a really great system. job marketing that idea to Correct. us that we need this system. Well, right. It's been created even though the system doesn't function for us it's like the house always wins right like yeah. we don't have no control when you go there 100 percent. you're completely out of control 100 percent. yeah they they have so so they get to use like wrap your head around this for a second they get to use the money that you give them that is generated from thin air and then they'll invest it into convincing you further why it's important to continue doing that and to add more to it and there is nothing else out there to tell you otherwise. And they incentivize it with points and yeah, right. and arbitrary shit that that's Co- not going to help. That you don't you. understand either. That's, yeah, right, that's right, right, yeah. Well, right. Oh, it's more confusion. Oh, I better trust them. That is such yeah. an interesting conversation too because a lot of times we'll bring a solution to a client. And what they'll do is they'll, and, and rightfully so, right? But they'll take as much time and energy as they can to pick the thing apart and to find why it won't work. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. you got to do your research. But what's Quick interesting yeah. is you'll go and buy a mortgage, and you have no fucking clue how that thing works. Yeah. You'll go and buy yeah, it, get a car loan, and you yeah. have no clue how that thing works. Because that's what you're know. supposed to do. Yeah, you actually don't know how it works. Go, so just trust it. Like going in debt for college, for an education. You go yeah. $50,000 in debt for like a mediocre education that's outdated in an arbitrary system, and now you get out of it, and you're permanently stuck there. Yeah. That's what we're finding now with, like, paying young, that with like the younger generations. Yeah, yeah. like That's I like don't know how far you're in, but like we're stuck now, a slave to the system, and then they give you a credit card so you can buy nice shit, and then yeah. you've got to have a car so you look cool for your friends, and then they're like, oh, let's add another 500000 on that with a house, and before you know it, you're a million dollars in debt, and you're yeah. never going to get out and of you're it. You're just on the rabbit, rabbit wheel yeah. before you even understand any of this stuff. Yeah, you're not paying for the shit that you just bought. You're paying for the interest to be able to keep that shit. And then here's the thing. You're going to go see somebody with a suit and tie on and they're going to tell you, Devin, you know what? You're doing good. You got this job. You got these great, you know, things going on in your life. You got this house. You need to start saving some money, putting some money away. (laughs) Okay. So now what are you doing? You're trusting some dude who probably doesn't understand this thing that he's actually selling you very well. Mm Because most people don't understand how most of the typical RSPs, uh, mutual funds, these different types of investments in these vehicles, people don't understand how they actually work. Mm-hmm. They and really show up as, as complicated. Yeah, they show up as complicated, so we just go, oh, I better just do that. But here's the thing. If I'm starting to deposit money, let's say, into some type of investment account, where's your money? Mm-hmm. Who has control over it? Yeah. Do you have access to it? 
Maybe, but then if you access it, you're getting some kind of a sales penalty, probably a tax implication. 30 you're days to get it out. 30 days to yeah, get it conditions. out. You're going to lose on your growth. So if by accessing those funds today, you're hurting future Devin. So you're constantly being the one who's dealing with the penalties and the drawbacks and dealing with all of the risk. You're taking all of the risk all of the time. And yeah. you don't even realize it. And you don't even realize it. You just think it's normal. And you don't realize that it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, yeah. You, you think that this is just how it goes because there's never been given, there's, there's never been an option given to you uh, as an alternative. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is an alternative. There is an alternative. Well, and not to go too far away from it, but that's where the conspiracy gets developed is like you have no control, you have no idea. They convolute the message, they, they pour on all these perks and whatever else and then before you know it just like this is too much yeah you check for, for like the, yeah for the regular person so you just trust yeah you just whoever's roll. sitting behind the desk you're like shit you know this because you read all that shit in reality that person probably hasn't even read the terms and conditions entirely i don't they just got the, they just got the training from the guy before yeah, them actually, that'll help them push that product which goes back to the beginning of what you're saying that's a really good segue that i just want to caveat here i think banks are evil but that doesn't mean that people who work at banks are evil. Right. Right. There's good people there. Forgive they, them for they know not what they do. Hell yes. A lot of them think that they're doing a good job and that they're, that they're actually helping you. So mm -hmm. God bless them. Yeah. And, and what would it look like if they had the whole story? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the objective <laughs> here is to give the whole story. You've been fed half of a story for your entire life. Yeah. Not your fault. Take responsibility though. 100%. Right, yeah. It's because there's, still your decision. there's missing equations, uh, pieces to the equation that you need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, it was a process for you, eh? Like when I, when I think back about, uh, where you've come from and, uh, and when we first met, uh, it was, it was in that, uh, lens of that, that, th this world of, uh, creating best intention to create some stability and some security for your clients. Mm -hmm. You did that for me and my family. It, it served, uh, and, and you came at it to serve with the best intentions. What, how would you have changed that knowing what you know now? What, what was missing in that equation to be able to, to actually have it be of service to me more effectively? Like, what do you know now? And just to, to caveat this, so he, uh, I have insurance in, in place for, for myself and for my, uh, for my wife and my kids. And that was really random. What was that, a sneeze? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> she was surprised by it herself. <laughs> they shut down the operating system for a second. <laughs> so we, we got all of this insurance in place. And, and I got to say, like, uh, for everybody out there, the concern that you have about, uh, about it being complicated and, uh, and there's still, there's still a lot of uncertainty inside of it. And there's a, there's a measure of confidence, but there, my experience of that engagement was a direct, my mortality was sitting in front across from me at the table. Like there was, I, I really got present to the, what if, mm -hmm. what if I'm not around? And most people shut down in those types of conversations. So yeah, no one likes to think about that. Nobody thing. likes to think about that. And I'm saying all of that to say this. There was a piece that was missing for me to instill the confidence that I'm making the right choice. Because in the moment, intellectually, I knew this was a, a right thing to do. Much like intellectually, it makes sense to leverage w what the banks are, are making available. But there was something missing for me, contextually, to understand uh, to what end? What, 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 how will it actually benefit me other than protecting my family if something happens to go, uh, right? Like that there's something, okay, some sort of uh, casualty. But what was missing was, was something more long term, more sustainable. Mm. What would you share now? Okay, so yeah, so that's great. So uh, let's talk about the infinite banking concept and how, how it works. Um, now, get that this is 40 years over 40 years of uh, research, development, um, practicing that I'm trying to distill down in like 40 seconds. So, so bear with me. So um, the infinite banking concept itself is simply just a concept. It's an idea. It's a practice, a process where you literally, let's say you'd save money. You can do infinite banking with a shoebox. So you pile up money in a shoebox 
and then it, you and then you have an expense in life. And I'm just going to use vehicles as a because that's one that's really relatable. So you take out of the shoebox the thirty or forty grand that you need to go buy the vehicle. Now you make a commitment to the shoebox. You make a commitment to your family or to your to your thinking, your process. Wow! I now just paid off the vehicle with cash. Now nothing's happening to the money in the shoebox, is it? Nothing, no growth there, nothing, right? So technically, we're losing money just by having it sit in the shoebox. So stay with me. So the shoebox is probably not an effective platform to practice infinite banking. Make sense? Right. But what I'm going to do now, because I got the car, I'm going to work out an amortization schedule because I'm the banker. I'm going to work out an amortization schedule that says, hey, I want to pay back my 30 grand inside of five years. Al, help me figure out what that math is going to be. What do I got to pay every month? Oh, it's 500 bucks. Great. I'm going to purposely charge myself a higher interest rate. I'm going to tap on 5%. Yeah, I'm going to pay back 600 bucks every month to my shoebox. Now the money is flowing back to my shoebox so that I can use the money again in the future. I have one question because banks offer a degree of security. And I'm always worried, like, I don't know if we're talking tangible shoebox or like a safe where you put your cash in. One thing that's always concerned me about hosting my own money is if someone were to rob me. This is awesome. He's making it completely literal. The reality. No, I mean, no, no, but literally it could be a shoebox. It could be. But to your point, where else is it going? It's not going to the bank. It could be a high interest savings account at, at whose bank? Someone else's bank. So when he's talking about the shoebox, what he's actually referring to is where you put the money. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it is in a bank, your wealth, yeah, your cash, must reside somewhere. Yes. It has to have a home. And I thought one of the talking points was if we put it in, say, like a centralized bank, we don't really have much freedom without... That's okay. That's my point. So that's why I use the example of a shoebox. Yeah. Like literally, I can take my money out of a bank, I could put it into a shoebox, but to your point, exactly. It's not a very effective warehouse, is it? So so very secure. So what would be a good one? Okay. So now we talked really basic about the process. That's basically the process. I'm piling up cash. I'm going to use my own money to finance the things of life. And then I'm going to pay that cash flow back to myself so I can use it again in the future. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So again, the shoebox is not very effective. And David alluded to insurance. A lot of times people buy insurance because all they think about is death benefit. Got higher private choice for bid. I get smacked by a bus. I need, I'm, I've got human capital. I've got value here. And I've got a promise to my family and all these other creditors and people I borrowed money from. I promise them to pay them back and I promise to take care of my family. So if I get smacked by a bus, I can take action before said bus hits me and get a life insurance policy to make sure that that money's there if I die. And if I die, apparently David inherits all my money. So right. you're the only person's name I could remember when I was filling up that information. <laughs> <laughs> like I should probably never tell him about this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How and, much money you got? Uh, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and yeah, so to David's point, normally people look at insurance as an expense. And what the life insurance industry has done, they develop these fucking amazing products that are not promoted very well, that are older than the Income Tax Act. In fact, these products have been around since before Canada has been a country. And all we do is we focus on death benefit. The industry, the advisors, everybody focuses. Typically, that's that's where we we focus. Yeah, we focus on death benefit. There's a bunch of different types of insurance, and I'm not going to go too far down that rabbit hole, but I'm going to talk about one magical uh, platform that we use to facilitate the infinite banking concept. Uh, the platform is called a permanent participating dividend paying whole life policy. That is That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. <laughs> oh, yeah. An acronym that. It's it's an acronym for <laughs> Most that. people would, would just say whole life or they'd say par insurance. But the problem with that is because I'm being really specific because, hey, guess what? There's a whole crap load of par insurance. Right. There's a whole crap load of participating policies and and whole life insurance. Like, so that's the point we use a specific, especially designed dividend paying whole life policy, preferably with what's called a mutual company. A mutual company means that there are no shareholders. It is owned literally by the policyholders. So if the money, if, if the insurance company is owned by the policyholders, who are they then making decisions to benefit? Right. The policyholders. Yeah. If, if there's other insurance companies that are called stock companies and there's banks that are all owned by stockholders, who are they making decisions to benefit? To pay the dividends to the stockholders. To their stockholders, yeah. exactly. So, so we don't have nearly enough time to get into uh, the specifics of how a dividend paying whole life policy works, but I'm just going to shoot out a couple of high level points as to why it's such a good platform 
to facilitate the banking process. Yeah, and then if, if you could kind of go into, because I'm super interested just myself, like for one minute, just go into like what we can do now, like something actionable, sure. like the regular Joe, what do we do about it? So this is cool, we get it, what do we do about it? Yeah, well, uh, there's, there's a couple a couple things there, because I, I just I wanted to share a bit about how the policies work, but that's okay. What what you can what you can do is you can get in touch with well me or or Ascendant Financial. You, you need to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Get a hold of Nelson Nash's book, uh, a book called uh, Becoming Your Own Banker: The Unlocking the Infinite Banking Concept, which we can link in the show notes. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, what I'll do, what okay. we can do is we can link the uh, a place where you can purchase the books. But uh, you can also, um, we have webinar content that people can watch to start wrapping their mind around how this concept actually works and start to change your thinking. And ultimately what you would do is if you look at it and go, hey, I really want to know more about this. I see this fitting in my life. Awesome. You'd get connected with an authorized infinite banking practitioner, not just some random life insurance advisor. Because if you tell them you want to put a bunch of money yeah, into yeah. a whole life policy, they would love to set you up with one. But so you have to be educated like you are on that. They have to be educated on the process, how to actually right. coach somebody, how to set up a plan intentionally to, to accomplish an objective. We're helping people literally buy back their own debt, pay off their debt permanently while they build their savings and have their cash flow flow back to them way quicker than they would be paying it off on their own. I always joke with people and say, people go, oh, I want to learn how to manage my debt better. Well, let me tell you something about debt management. If, you, you, don't, Nash, if you don't own, that's correct. If you don't own the debt, debt does a, a fine job managing itself. <laughs> if you don't own the debt, you're not managing shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not your job yet. Right? Yeah. Listen to this. He who owns the debt creates the wealth. He who owns the debt creates the wealth. Who owns your debt, folks? The bank. It ain't you. No. So I where's the money flowing to? Here's the thing. The asset for the bank is the stream of payments we make. They don't mm. give a fuck about your house. They don't give a crap about the, air quote, the asset. They care about the stream of payments. Keeping you on the line for as long as possible. That's right. 100%. This is like just cracking yeah. the surface of... Of something that has been a uh, a way of operating for the majority of people across the world for like I don't know 100 years. Yeah, so century at least. And yeah, yeah and and so there is uh, there really is a, a it's necessary for each of us to uh, to take the time to uh, absorb what was just said. Yeah, because this is not one of those things. That's uh, that intellectually uh, for for many people uh, lands right away, yeah. right? Because we are it's in a direct combat with uh, status quo. Everything you've been tra you're not just you, not just your parents, but your grandparents have been trained and indoctrinated indoctrinated into thinking that this is how you do money. Right. But what's interesting about that, and I get we're getting really close with time here. What's interesting about that is that when you look at the stock market crashes that have occurred, when your grandparents went through, uh, what was it Black Monday or whatever, back in the 1930s, when everybody was standing outside the banks trying to get their money, everyone's pulling their money out of the stock markets and stuff like that, everybody's losing their portfolios. Guess what these dividend paying whole life policies were doing? They were their, ruined. Their values were ratcheting up. We've been taught that you need to invest with risk to grow your money. But here's what's so. Since 1847, I don't know if you know your history, but that's since before Canada's been a country, these dividend paying whole life policies have been paying dividends every single year, uninterrupted. And the values inside those policies can never be reduced. It's contractual. So you're building an asset and you can access the cash inside of it. You can leverage the, the cash inside of it. You own it, you control it. Yeah. It possesses all of the principles of a banking system, quite literally. Yeah. So it's, it's fascinating shit. Th this is, I'm so glad we had this conversation and you and I have had this conversation many times uh, and it is really an important conversation. And, and uh, uh, I'm excited to, to keep uh, distilling it and breaking it apart. And, and maybe what we can do is pick some things to, to dive in a little bit more and get a sense of it. Yeah. And what I'll do, or sorry, not to cut you off, because we were just talking about the, the link to buy the books. Yeah. And uh, also what we'll, we'll post in the show notes is uh, a link to my, my mentor's, um, is a, a webinar that's just evergreen content, right? So he's practicing the principles too of, he, you know, filmed it once and we share it all over. It's a, 
really clear and direct message. It's only about 35 or 45 minutes, but it's uh, learn learn with J, like the letter J, learnwithj.com. You can opt into a 45 minute webinar there and uh, just listen to what the man has to say. It's pretty incredible stuff. And uh, if you're interested beyond there, we can, we'll take you through a whole process that will set you up powerfully. Well, that's awesome. So thanks for coming, Vern, <laughs> and, and jamming on the podcast with us. Yeah. I hope to see you again next week. I'll be back. So I want to thank everybody who keeps coming back to listen. We haven't done a very good job of um, making, uh, making this more available, and this is part of what we're looking to, uh, to elevate. And so I'm going to ask if you're getting any sort of value, have gotten any sort of value out of the podcast to go to any of your streaming platforms, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you're listening and send us a review. Tell us what it is that you have enjoyed about the podcast, what it is that you've taken away from the podcast, maybe even something that you'd like to hear about on the podcast and we'll do our best to find the right people that can talk about those topics. We want to know what you think at the end of the day. We want to know what you think about how we're doing, about what we're doing. We've received some really great feedback in the past and and we want to kind of keep that flow going. So let us know. How is it going for you? What would you like to know? This was episode 77. We'll see you again next week.